OK, so in this unit, we're going to look at tunneling. So this will provide us with the opportunity to understand how we can create secure and authenticated uh, encryption tunnels for our data. First, we'll look at some scanners that will allow us to be able to assess the security of our, our web servers and our, of our tunneling. Then we'll look at uh, the core technology around the usage of SSL TLS uh, tunnels, and then on to IPsec and VPN tunnels. Okay, so here we are. This is the infrastructure that we might have. We might have Bob and Dallas, and we need to make sure that they can communicate uh, securely and also authenticate each other if possible. So from previous units that we found out that we can use the key exchange methods, such as using Diffie-Hellman and elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, to be able to create a symmetric key, which is then used for the, the tunnel. For that tunnel, we're probably going to be using a symmetric key method uh, to be able to encrypt the data. So if we generate the key, then we can actually generate the, uh, the key that we're going to use, the symmetric key method. Uh, key that we're going to use for the tunnel. This is typically AES encryption or ChaCha20. Then we'll use a hashing method. We need to agree the hashing method that Bob and Alice will use for the uh, for the tunnel. And then we'll use a public key encryption method to be able to authenticate either the server to the client or or mutual authentication. So. For our tunnel, we need to agree the symmetric key method, such as AES. We need to create, uh, agree the hashing method, such as SHA-256. We need to create, we agree the key exchange method, such as elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. And we need to, to agree on the public key method that we want to use to authenticate uh, the, the other side or the public key of the of the server, and that might be RSA. So basically, what we'll see is that Bob will offer a whole range of cipher suites that he would like to use. Alice will pick one of those, and they will agree to the the characteristics of the tunnel. So, for example, Bob may offer a whole range of symmetric key methods hashing methods, key exchange methods, and public key methods that he can support, uh, perhaps 10 or so. And then Alice, the server, will pick one of those, and then that will be the tunnel that's created. OK, so we can, we can use uh, some uh, methods uh, to be able to assess uh, what uh, tunnel, this, what the cipher contract uh, methods these, the server can support. So one of these is with SSL labs. So let's have a look now at uh, SSL labs. So we'll just pick google.com just now just to be able to assess the security of that. And we can see overall it's getting a B rating. Because Google.com is accessed by so many different devices all over the world, it probably needs to be slightly less secure in terms of the, uh, the protocols it supports because it must support many different uh, devices, uh, especially legacy browsers. So I can see here that the site itself is getting a B grade because of this protocol support. And it's, you can see the weakness here is that it's supporting the older versions of TLS 1.0, which is seen to be relatively insecure, and TLS 1.1. And that's why it's been uh, uh, capped. But overall, it's supporting the latest TLS version of 1.3, and it also has good support for its uh, certificates. OK, so we can have a look at the certificate that it has. So as you can see that the signed hash is SHA-256 with the RSA signature for the digital signature, which is quite good. And then uh, overall, 
uh, we can have a look at the additional data, such as the protocols it supports. These two are relatively weak, but these two are, are fairly strong. Then when it comes to it, it will define the range of cipher suites that are supported. Here are the ones for TLS 1.3, and you will see we can use AES 128-bit GCM with SHA-256, or we can upgrade to 256 AES, or we can use ChaCha20 in Poly1305 uh, if we want to use the ChaCha20 uh, suite. Uh, both of these use uh, elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, and uh, we can use actually the uh, curve 25519 for that, uh, that key exchange, authenticated key exchange. For 1.2, we can see there are some weaker ones that are supported there and explain what these are, but we've got, we've got uh, elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, sorry, we've got elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman with uh, RSA uh, here for the key exchange. We have elliptic of uh, DSA for our uh, signature method. Sorry, that should be elliptic curve to the Hellman with elliptic curve DSA for the signature method uh, to authenticate the server. In this case, it's elliptic curve to the Hellman with RSA. So we can either have ECDSA or RSA to be able to authenticate the signature of the server. Then we have uh, ES GCM for the symmetric key and this is SHA-256 and here. And here are the weaker ones here. There's three DES and uh, this one here only supports SHA-1 so that's not a good hashing method. And then eventually it'll show us all the different uh, uh, browsers uh, that can support these uh, these methods and the weak areas. So because it's Google, then it needs to support even Internet Explorer 7 running off Windows, uh, running off, uh, uh, running with Vista, Windows Vista. Again, then eventually it will look at uh, some of the weaknesses around the cipher suites that we've used. You can see it's fairly secure. Uh, there for, for that. Another site that we can use is securedheaders.com. These uh, assess the new integration of uh, some of the, uh, the HTTP headers that can protect the sites against uh, uh, code injection, iframe injection and so on. So if we try google.com, let's see what we get. And uh, just there. Yeah. Okay, so you see it, it supports some of them. The X frame options allows the integration of uh, or the detection of uh, I frame in injection into a, into a page, but it doesn't su doesn't support some of the other ones, uh, which in this case is looking at the content security policy, which will define which websites are allowed to integrate code into the website. Okay, so th those are two examples of, uh, of scanning sites that we can assess the overall security. Okay, so this is what we have in terms of our tunnels uh, and using our, our public networks. Okay, so if we're using a public uh, network connection, which is which will be fairly typical, Eve could uh, eavesdrop here. So we need some sort of encryption. We need authentication of devices against spoofing, and we also need to make sure that we have integrity with the data packets that are sent, because Eve could uh, change data packets. Eve could uh, set up a malicious gateway that Bob connects to. Uh, such as with uh, uh, free Wi-Fi uh, access. So we need to make sure that, that we can protect against these threats. So when it comes to the tunnel that we create, the scope is very important. 
Either we create end-to-end -end tunneling uh, right through our untrusted network and into other elements. So this is from host to host. In a corporate environment, uh, often this type of end-to-end -end between two hosts isn't allowed uh, because uh, it's not possible for the security devices to be able to check uh, the traffic. So we probably find there's a, there's an intermediate device or a proxy uh, or a WAF uh, that sits in between the two hosts that allows the tunnel to be broken and then inspect the data, data packets. More popular is just to use a tunneling mode. With this, we just tunnel through an untrusted network and then we would not have the tunnel at uh, either end. Okay, so here's an example here. We might create uh, a network such as this. We might have a proxy server, so we can't get out of the network unless we use the proxy server. So there is no direct uh, connection between Alice and the internet. But we might also uh, create our VPN tunnel to go from here to here. So if we go through the different layers of uh, security that we have, the lowest layer, of course, we have physical security to make sure that we have restricted zones. At the level above, we layer two with Ethernet, uh, we can have VLANs. So even though the devices connect to the same switch, we can actually uh, isolate them with different VLANs. So these two machines will not be able to communicate with each other at this layer. What we can do is that we can then trunk or tunnel between two VLANs. So it's possible to create a trunking port on a switch, such as using 802.1Q, to be able to trunk from one switch onto another. And this keeps all our communications at, the, at layer two, so they're, they're very fast. At the next layer, we can start to bind IP and TCP together. So with this, this case, we would have uh, firewalls to be able to filter at layer two, three and layer four. And then at layer four, the TCP layer, for a connection, we will look for the SYN from a client to a server. The SYN ACK comes back and then the ACK is then uh, sent back. This is defined as a three-way handshake and it's the start of any stateful uh, connection that we make on the, the web. Okay, so let's look at what our connection looks like and then how we build on uh, SSL and TLS. So here in our packets we can see a SYN connection from a client to a server. Next, we see a SYNAC uh, coming back from the server uh, to the client. And then finally, we'll receive an ACK. Uh, this is the ACK here. And basically what's happened is that we bind the, the ports, the TCP ports together with the IP addresses to make a unique connection across the internet. No other connection on the internet will have those four parameters of the IP addresses and the TCP ports. We also have things like a window size defined. So at the end of this connection, this three-way handshake, we can actually uh, define the connection that we have. It's a rather old fashioned uh, way of creating a connection and was created at a time when network connections were often unreliable and needed this handshake. There are new protocols around which improve this but this is still the standard way that we connect to uh, the web. So here's our stack here. Uh, we start physical, data link is, is Ethernet, and then network layer, layer three is IP, IPX, transport layer, TCP, UDP, and so on. And then we have our application layer sitting on top. What happens is that uh, I've drawn this incorrectly. The, the SSL layer should sit in here or it's layer 4.5. So we take our, our normal uh, 
uh, infrastructure. And then we add on an SSL layer uh, to make it encrypted. So anything below the uh, SSL uh, layer will be, encrypt will be encrypted and everything above it will be unencrypted. So all of our intermediate devices uh, will not be able to read the data from the tunnel or decrypt the data from the tunnel because it's encrypted at each of the hosts. Then what we do is we move the ports that we'd normally map to a different one. So port 80 for HTTP becomes 443, for Telnet 23 becomes 22. And the data itself will be uh, encrypted in a tunnel. In the data packet, we define two uh, byte fields as the for the secure socket for the actual version number. So anything up to 3.0 is seen as, as highly insecure, and anything above that is is much is more secure. Uh, so we should really try to 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 move up to 1.2 and then 1.3. But that uh, value is contained with inside that field there. Okay, so the way it does is we have a normal three-way handshake on port 443, and then the client sends a client hello. Here it is here. So in the client hello, we will find that the client will offer a range of cipher uh, suites that it would like to use. Next, we'll get, so this is the, the range of cipher suites here that we can see that the client is offering. And then the server will respond back with the method that is selected. So out of all these methods here, we can see that the server has selected uh, RSA, 3DES and SHA-1. So the server hello comes back and along with the server hello, the server sends its digital certificate. Its digital certificate contains its public key. Okay, so sometimes what we can have is a, is a, a key exchange method, which is an elliptic cover to Fehelman. And it could be that we use a public key encryption method. This is the case here. And we can see here that we use the public key of the server to be able to encrypt the symmetric key that the client wants to use, and then we'll send it over. This data here actually shows that uh, exchange. Okay, so let's look at uh, a connection, and we can use OpenSS, OpenSSL for that. Okay, so we'll just open up a connection to, to Google. And that's it there. And we can see here that this is using TLS 1.3. We're using 256 bit uh, AES uh, GCM with uh, SHA-384. Okay, we can look at all the other details. Uh, we're using uh, ECDSA for the for the signature. We're using SHA, uh, SHA sorry, we're using uh, SHA-384 for the hashing method. And this should show us our certificate. Okay, so there's an example here. This is the ones that are being offered. And then this is the one that's been selected here. RSA uh, for the key exchange. So we're going to use public key encryption to exchange the key. Typically these days we wouldn't use that. Uh, in TLS 1.3, we've dropped the RSA method for encrypting the key for the key exchange. And this would typically be ECDSA. We use an RC4, 128-bit, uh, and then with SHA-1 there. So let's look at some example traces. So in this case, we'll just look at a standard uh, SSL connection here. Okay, so there is the SYN, the SYNAC, and then the AC here, the start of the three-way handshake. And then the next thing is the client is sending the server a client hello. 
Okay, there's layer 2, layer 3, layer 4, layer 4.5. These are TLS, which is the SSL type layer. So let's have a look to see. Well, first we can actually have a look to see if we can find the version number for our handshake. And there it's in, in there. Okay, so this is TLS 1.0, if we have these two fields here with zeros. So let's have a look at what's contained in the client hello. So we can see here is offering 28 suites. There they are. Uh, so we've got elliptic curve, Diffie Hellman, Diffie Hellman with RSA, uh, uh, which would be weak RSA for the key exchange. The second field is our symmetric key method, uh, A256 AES with CBC. And then the last one is our SHA, uh, our hashing method. In this case, it's SHA1. Okay, so that's what gets sent to the uh, from the client to the server. And then what comes back is a server hello, which will also contain the certificate with the public key of the server. So in this case, we can go down to find out what's been uh, accepted here. And we can see here that it's selected RSA key exchange. So we're using public key encryption. Uh, selected three DES with CBC and SHA, SHA1. So that will then be our, our method that we uh, uh, will communicate. And then after this, we'll actually find out this is the, the client sending the, uh, the encrypted key, encrypted with the public key of the server. Okay, so there's the example there with, with using public key encryption. And this is supported up to TLS 1.2, but TLS 1.3 doesn't support the public key encryption method for key exchange. Okay, so here's a, a little uh, program here uh, that you can try in the lab uh, to be able to set up your own server. Uh, and you can see here it has a, a private key uh, on, this, on the server to be able to support the connection. Okay, and this shows uh, our, our basic connection here. So 1.3 is now the the pushed as the is the main standard and it addresses some of the issues uh, from previous versions. Unfortunately, there is a known attack against it, and it's attack around the the zero uh, round trip time uh, use case. So TLS tries to speed up the three-way handshake and the negotiation to have a very quick uh, connection. Uh, examples of this are with Google's Quick protocol, which, which gets rid of the three-way handshake. And these are the attacks that are possible on this, on TLS 1.3. So now let's look at another area, and this is for creating a proper uh, a VPN or virtual private network uh, networks using the IPsec protocol. So with this, we can use a range of methods uh, to be able to tunnel. Some of them are secure and some of them aren't, but IPsec is the most common one that someone would use if they were traveling and want to connect back to a VPN uh, server. This will tunnel our data over a public network. Typical ones we can have is an extranet where we connect our VPN to an external uh, company. We can have an intranet uh, VPN where we connect two, two of our companies, same companies together, or we can have our remote access VPN, which allows for uh, uh, devices to be able to connect onto the corporate network over a VPN network. 
as I said before, we can either just tunnel between our VPN uh, uh, services or we could go for end-to-end -end encryption. So to be able to detect when someone is using a VPN, uh, normally UDP port 500 is used for the key exchange. So if we wanted to block any uh, IPsec or tunneling, IPsec tunneling, we would block uh, port 500. So the ways that we can do this is that we can encrypt the whole of the packet and or we can we can encrypt the uh, the header and we can add an authenticated header onto the onto the data packets or uh, we can do the both together so this will take the ip header and then update it with uh, our encrypted packet okay so this just shows you um, an example set up normally we have two phases to set up our ipsec uh, the first phase is the internet key exchange phase and the second defines the basic policies that will be used for the tunnel so in this case we just want to set up what the the uh, the, the cipher policy is so hashing method encryption diffie hellman uh, the authentication methods and so on and this is defined as a Cisco device here. And then the second phase, we can actually define uh, what should go into the tunnel and on what interfaces that we actually watch for. Because some data needs to go into the tunnel, such as for a corporate network, and other data does not go into the tunnel. So here's an example here of some traffic that's been uh, captured. So in this case, again, we see the cipher suites that are being offered uh, to, the, uh, to the other side. We can see the ports that are used here are port 500. And then the server will select the, the cipher suite that it wants to use. So in this case, we'll look at how the tunnel is being created. So in this case, I'm printing the routing table on my uh, device. I'm connecting to, to Wi-Fi here. And we can see the default route goes through, uh, the default route goes through this gateway here, which is my wireless access point. This is my network connection, and I'm using the gateway here for uh, all of my traffic, apart from the traffic that's for the local network. So if I now connect to the, the VPN, you can see now my routing table has been updated. Now we see new routes that are, are now added and we will have a new default gateway uh, for, for these. So we can see the default gateway now has changed for these networks to go through this new one, which will be the the VPN gateway of the corporate network. And we now have a new interface created on the device, which will be the interface of from our own uh, device onto the network. So in this case, uh, if we have a device here, then we have, we have a, a new network interface on it which will connect to the, the gateway on the corporate network. So that's this address here. But for any other traffic that isn't included in this routing table, it will still go through the normal gateway and will be untunneled. So let's have a look at making a connection. So there's our routing table there. Okay, so uh, we'll create our, our VPN. So without creating the VPN, we're doing a trace route back into this, this uh, server here, and we can actually see all of the, the, uh, the, the, routing, the routers along the way to be able to get to the, the destination here. But now when we apply the VPN, we can see that we can we, we will connect straight on to the gateway 
machine and then from the gateway onto the onto the, the destination. It is still going the same route, but you can see that we're tunneling through all of those devices so we can't actually see them anymore. If we now look at tracing a route to another uh, server which is not on the corporate network, we can see the route it takes. And then when we apply the VPN, we can see the VPN isn't um, applying the tunnel onto the traffic so we can still see the route then. Okay, so that's been an introduction to uh, SSL and TLS and also into VPNs and IPsec. Okay, thank you.